about Nipsey Hussle real quick. So, shout out Nip. Shout out Nip. Shout out Nip. So there have been some recent developments in the case of his murder. And there has been a witness who has spoken out in regards to the motive behind uh, his, his, his murder, basically. So this witness, who is going unnamed for the time being, said that the murder or the motive of the murder was based on Nipsey Hussle allegedly being an informant. So basically this person, uh, I'm not sure what publication published this story, but nonetheless, it was reported by Hip Hop DX. Like they, they're the ones who got the story or whatever. But I'm not sure if they're the ones who did the interview. But nonetheless, they got the words from the uh, person that's being questioned right now in regards to the murder of Nipsey Hussle. And basically, they're just no, they're just identified as witness one. So their ident identification is being uh, withheld for the time being. So. <clears throat> She states, and it's, it's a woman, um, so witness one is stated as saying how she wanted to grab a picture with Nipsey Hussle when she was riding with the person who eventually killed him, which was Eric, was it Eric Holder, I believe? Uh, yes, Eric Holder, there we go. So basically she was stating how, and I'm quoting the article from Hip Hop DX, um, witness one says she was excited and had hopes of taking a selfie with the Grammy Award nominated rap star. After Holder grabbed food from the adjoining burger joint, he made his way to Nip, and that's when the dispute began. The woman says she reported she reportedly heard ask Nip if he was if he's ever snitched before. In response, Nip uh, motioned for Holder to go away, uh, while accusing him of being a snitch. Holder then returned to Witness One's vehicle and reportedly asked her to drive around the corner of the strip mall. She claims he pulled out a semi-automatic handgun and Witness him cock it back before telling her he intended on performing a drive-by. When this one was against it, so Holder got out of the car, put on a red shirt, and instructed her not to leave. Holder reportedly got out of the car and went through a back alleyway to get Nipsey in front of the store. She says that that is when Holder shot Nip several times while striking two others. When this one spoke with LAPD two days after the murder and is not expected to be charged in connection with Nipsey's murder at this time. So after hearing that statement from Witness One, what's your what's your thoughts on that? Man, to be honest, I don't really get into too much of the of the case or anything. Right. Because to be honest, I really think all of this I think he really got killed, not because of this whole Eric Holder thing. I think it's really because you know you were supposed to you were supposed to make a documentary on Doctor Sabi. Eh? Right, right, I know that. So I really think you know we every time we have a leader Government always ends up getting into it, you know. They always take down our leaders. So personally, <coughs> I think behind the scenes, really, it's not about this at all. I really think it's personally, it's just a, it's probably a setup, and he's probably working with them. Like, you know, I might sound crazy or anything, but personally, I think it's, I think it's, I don't think it's about. I don't. It can't be just about street, about street affiliated things. I think it's something bigger behind the scenes. It has to be. I'm gonna say this because I've had this discussion with a lot of people in regards to the potential motive behind his murder and what have you. I personally don't think it was about the documentary that he was trying to create with Dr. Sebi. I personally don't think that. Mm. Um, I think that, I don't know the main reason, of course, but I feel like his gang ties from the past and what have you play in part of it. Not the, part, whole, reason, not the whole reason, but at least in part of it. Played a big part of you. Right, at, yes, at the very least. Because that type of affiliation that you have and the fact that you're still in that same community mm -hmm. that you used to do your nefarious activities in, I get you want to be, you want to work within your community I got to that from uplift it. Yeah. I got that from the two because personally, I want to, I actually, like, I, I want to work, like, you know, in the in the areas and stuff like that. Right. On the street, like, I have to pass on my, I do that, I'm doing that at school too. Any right, message, right. like, I pass any type of message or anything I learn from social media and things, yeah. I pass it on to people at my age at school and too. Right. I know they follow me on Instagram. <laughs> You see on my page, you know, every single day I'm posting, I'm posting videos. So right. every single day, I wanna, I started realizing that I'm not like, yo, it's good that we can go out in the streets and do community work with us. <coughs> you also have to be cautious, you have to be very, you have to be very um, it's like knowledgeable. Right. Of what's going on? 100%. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of snakes, everything. There's a lot of fake fake people out here in the streets, man. They they will really do something to you. You gotta know when to move. You know how to move in certain situations. You know. So Absolutely. I would say he was in the hood too much. Th thank you. Thank you. Thank good you. Good to be in the hood, but not that much. Right? And that's the point I was trying to get at as well, because like I've been preaching that point ever since this became a topic. Because yes, I get it. You want to uplift your 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 hood and your community. But you don't always have to be there all the time mm -hmm. in order to do that. Like, if you are trying to build a brand and empire, so to speak, 
hire a network of people around you that can actually take care of the groundwork that's happened. That's why, for example, a lot of government powers have embassies in different nations so that in case they're not there to be there, they have their, their secretary of state, for example. They have X, Y, and Z over there so that you don't always have to be there because especially for someone in his position, someone who used to be in a gang and who has gang ties and affiliations, that's going to breed a lot of a lot of negative energy and sometimes that comes back to, to haunt you. But at the same time, you can't blame him because... When you when you see the way the when you see the way um not just rappers anyone in the streets when you see the way they're growing up their upbringing yeah that they're so like a big example of really and I tell people about this every single day not every single day but you know I tell people a lot mm -hmm. Kodak Kodak Black he is he is you know he is, that guy he's he, all sorts of messed he, up man. They, people like him are the big reasons why I say it's it's only it's only so much people that can get out of the hood because mm -hmm. I say being being stuck in the hood mm -hmm. it's all about your mentality yes the way your mentality is that you can you can be in the hood being the brokest brokest person on the block yeah but if you're the smartest you know what to do you know how to manage your money you know how to you know finding ways to network whatever you got to do to get out of the hood then you're going to get out of the hood look right. at Jay-Z right exactly used to sell drugs look at him now he's a <coughs> first black first black billionaire right big up to him for sure I think he's first hip hop billionaire yeah. specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, first hip hop billionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it's just a mentality at the end of the day, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think Nipsey was very was very smart. There's a lot of videos you can watch. He talks about um, you know, um knowing like about wealth yourself. management, yeah, stuff like you know, that. Man money management, everything, mm -hmm. you know, like he was very intelligent. But I think the street part, mm -hmm. once you're so tied into the streets, yeah, it's it's too hard to to get out of it because you're in it so you're in the streets for so long, right. you know. It's like it's it just wears on you so much. You right. don't know anything else, you know, to get out of it. Right, but I think like you owe it to yourself to get out of that environment so that your next generation doesn't have to live in that environment as well. I mean, look at how many rappers who came from those environments who are now living upscale, so to speak. Like yeah. Jay Z does not live in Marcy anymore. He lives in like in the rich part of New Jersey. I'm sure Kendrick Lamar lives in like Northern California or something to that extent. Like there are so many different artists who came from these. You know, like underserved communities that have now moved up because they know that they can't, or, they can't stay in that environment because they become targets. Yeah. Or we could just—I think we need to do it in a different way, mm -hmm. different way, not just going to the going to the hood and educating and educating the youth and then whatever you know and then leaving, calling it a day. I think I I just posted this on my page too. There's a video of um, Rick Ross. He was saying um, a big way to stay rich mm -hmm. is empowering your circle. Of course, yeah. So we need to empower people in the community, not just. Tell them so, cause I can go. I can tell you a hundred things. It's mm -hmm. up to you if you want to listen or not. Right, right. So, but I think we need to get people put not put food on people's plate, but right. put people in positions to be successful. Yeah. And then once they once they gain that knowledge of a mindset to be able to know how to get out the hood for themselves. Yeah. Then we can leave, and then they'll, they'll leave to us. Exactly. Like, like, show like, them how to get, get the food on their own, so that they become self sufficient. Yeah, because you can't just tell people you'll just come always. <coughs> Look at me, look at me, see what I'm doing, and use, use, my, use me as example. You gotta right. take, teach people how to use themselves as an example. Right. Example. That's why I appreciate a lot of a lot of these celebrities that came from these neighborhoods and then they leave their lasting imprint. Like Jalen Rose yeah. built a school in Detroit. Um, LeBron James built a mm -hmm. school in, in Akron yeah. to, to help people go through uh, college and university mm -hmm. and what have you, or show a path towards that. Dr. Dre created a music school in, in Compton as well. Yeah. So those are ways... Sorry? I didn't even hear about that. Yeah, yeah, no, they, he did that maybe like three or four years ago, roughly, yeah. But yeah, these are different ways where you can empower your community, mm -hmm. basically. I feel like maybe Nipsey was on the way to doing that. We don't know that for sure, but I feel like that would have been a more productive way of doing it rather than just him being there all the time showing that he's always there, which is admirable, but unfortunately, we see the consequences that come with that. The sad thing is, too, that in our generation, and I'm actually, it's really sad to see, people only care, I'm starting to realize this now from social media, people are only really starting to pay attention to you and really care about you unless it, until you're dead. Oh, yeah, I agree. I, I think it, it, The it, way it, Nipsey's getting love right now, he should have been getting this since he was alive. I agree, I agree. Like, I think it's, it's been like that for a long time. Like, social media amplifies it. But mm -hmm. I've, I've been saying this for a long time. I even had a conversation with somebody about this yesterday. And Biggie said it best. You're nobody until somebody kills you. Yep. So when you die, your profile goes through the roof. People will be singing your praises. Like Big L, for example, people are calling him like one of the top 10 greatest rappers of all time. I don't believe that. He was talented, but I don't believe that. Basically, he didn't have enough on his resume for me to dictate that personally. That's my personal opinion. At the same but, time, though, I think 
the reason why maybe he didn't have as much blow when he was alive mm -hmm. is because of his music. Like we all know, we all know Nipsey didn't be um intelligent, you know. Yeah. But I don't think his his music was as good mm -hmm. as people would probably think it was now because everyone's known seeing his name on Instagram. You can go on Instagram right, right. now, scroll up, you're gonna see Nipsey, Nipsey, Nipsey. Right. But I don't think his music was as big as it should have been because if his music was like Pac, mm -hmm. it was like everyone knows Pac. He would still listen to messages, go back to interviews, stuff, mm -hmm. and listen to his music. Like, Pac is still relevant <coughs> right now. Yeah. So I think he probably would have been more relevant. When, or not, not to say he wasn't relevant, but more relevant when he was alive if his music was a bit better. Right. Say. Absolutely. Now, I agree with that 100%. But yeah, definitely, uh, just kind of wrap up this portion of the segment. I mean, definitely some disturbing details in regards to Nipsey uh, and his death, if it is mm -hmm. in fact true. Uh, but hopefully, we'll get more information as it progresses, and we'll just kind of go from there. If you have any thoughts or opinions on this, uh, please let me know. Hit me up on social media at CoolRadioCC and share your thoughts. Cool.